All right. Now you'll have to tell me if the audio is not working. I, I think I figured out why I kept having so many problems. And if we get through all this without having any AV issues, it'll be a miracle. Let me know how the levels are. So this is one on in vitro fertilization. Again, all of these come from a YouTube channel that I'll show you. I can't keep the name in here because of the thing under it that says it's a health professional, but it's all from Nucleus Medical Media, which they have great animations on all sorts of medical topics that are just really, really interesting. But today we're going to watch a few that are in the obstetrics and gyne topic. And turn off the music. Hang on. In vitro fertilization is a process where a woman's eggs are fertilized outside her body, then placed back inside her body to help her get pregnant. A woman's reproductive system includes the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes. The levels for the desktop audio so for the video you want me to increase that i can do that and ovaries is that a little bit better during the monthly menstrual cycle one of the ovaries releases an egg in a process called ovulation after ovulation, the egg enters the fallopian tube. A woman is most likely to become pregnant if she has sex in the days just before, during, or right after ovulation. So we talked about this before. The fertile window is going to be the day of ovulation and the egg can live for about 24 hours. So not much past 24 hours after ovulation and up to five days prior because as we have discussed, sperm are like cockroaches, they live forever. And forever in this sense is a, you know, five day time frame. And that's forever because it's five times longer than an egg. During this time, a sperm cell from a man's reproductive fluid called semen is able to fertilize the egg just inside the fallopian tube. As it travels along the fallopian tube, the fertilized egg, now called an embryo, loses the outer cells that nourished it in the ovary. The embryo passes from the fallopian tube into the uterus. In the uterus, the embryo sheds its protective outer layer, called the zona pellucida, in a process called zona hatching. Zona hatching is necessary for the embryo to implant in the tissue lining the uterus. During implantation, a connection between the woman and the embryo begins to grow. This organ, wow, called the placenta, was allows... Very, very quickly that we went from an embryo to like an 18-week fetus. ...oxygen and nutrients to pass from her to the embryo. In vitro fertilization may be performed if a woman has been having trouble getting pregnant, a condition known as infertility. Or it may be done if a woman wants to have a child without a male partner. Before in vitro fertilization... There's other reasons. You might want to do pre-implantation genetic testing, which we talked about yesterday. Um, yeah, those are not the only reasons. A woman will receive fertility medication that causes more than one egg to grow and mature in the ovaries. So this is what we were talking about yesterday, where you're given injectable medications to stimulate the ovaries to produce more than one follicle. You don't want them to get all the way to ovulation if the goal is to aspirate the oocytes and then make them into embryos outside of the body. You want to get really close to ovulation and then go collect them before you ovulate. A man and we will do, we, you, know, you monitor that by monitoring their size. So when they get to about 22 millimeters, 24 millimeters, they're pretty close to ovulating. So you don't want to let them get much bigger than that. And sometimes even less than that, they'll ovulate. So you're watching for them to get, you know, to a size where they seem to be fairly close to ovulating, meaning that oocytes well-developed, but it hasn't come out of the cyst that it grows in because then you can't collect it. 
by the semen sample so that the healthiest sperm can be collected for fertilization. It'll show how it's collected in just a second. If the male partner is completely infertile, the, also known as sterile, the or the woman doesn't that. have a male partner, a donor may be arranged to provide sperm for this process. In vitro fertilization consists of three main procedures. Follicle aspiration, fertilization, and embryo transfer. During the first procedure, called follicle aspiration, eggs will be harvested from the ovaries. At the beginning of this procedure, an ultrasound probe will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that her doctor can view her ovaries. <laughs> I like that the ultrasound probe is eh, like a flashlight now. Inside the ovaries, the doctor will look for follicles. Each follicle is a fluid-filled sac that contains an egg. Then... So the way that this looks on ultrasound is... When you are in the operating room getting ready to do this, I have done a couple of these when I was a training student because I was interested in REI and thought I might want to do that. So um, this... Mm, that's not going to open very big. Let me see if I can find a bigger one. It's still not very big, huh? That's all right. Okay, so this is what we would be looking at when you're looking at it under, like, on the ultrasound machine. So what you're seeing here is the ovary and... I'll move this a little. So this is the ovary by ultrasound. We've talked about ultrasounds a little bit in another stream, but basically anything that's black is fluid, gray is tissue, and white would be bone. There's no white actually in this. I know this looks white. It's because the contrast is turned up fairly high, but that's not bone. That's just ovarian tissue around all of these follicles. So all of these little sections here are individual follicles, which most of them probably have an oocyte in them. And you can see here that they're measuring them. So that's 1.6 centimeters by 1.2 centimeters. And we were just talking about earlier that, you know, around 2.2 centimeters or 22 millimeters is where you start seeing, you know, ovulation starts to become more likely. So these are getting fairly close to the size where you would be ready to do the retrieval. It probably needs a couple more days. You expect it to be a couple millimeters per day. So um, again, I'm not an REI doctor. I don't do this procedure anymore, but I would think probably two days or so, and then you would do the retrieval here. So what you're seeing on the ultrasound machine when you do the procedure they're describing in the other video is going to look like this. And then while you introduce the needle, it comes, it's the ultrasound probe has like a a uh, place where you put the needle through it, and then the needle is introduced through the vagina. You're under sedation, sometimes general anesthetic, depending on the situation, and into the ovary. And then you have to get the needle into each individual little follicle and aspirate out the oocyte. Um, yeah, well, okay, so that's the size of the follicle, okay? That's not the size of the oocyte. The oocytes are going to be microscopic. You can't see them. So the follicles are you know, cysts, ovarian cysts, most of that, what's in it is fluid. You can't see the oocyte here. You can only see the follicles. And the doctor will insert a long, thin needle into and through the wall of her vagina and guide it to the ovary. I'm going to replay that since we just talked about it and I'm move this around a little so you can see better. Then the doctor will insert a long, thin needle into and through the wall of her vagina and guide it to the ovary. A so remember, all you can see during this process is that ultrasound image that I showed you, right? So the risk of this is that you're going through the vagina and then through the pelvis where anything could be there. You're wanting to make sure that you have the ultrasound probe as close as possible 
to the ovary because you don't want to accidentally go through the intestines or the bladder or anything else. So you you want to make sure that you can see exactly what's between you and the ovary, which hopefully is only going to be vaginal tissue. But that is a risk of this procedure is that you could injure something near where you're putting that needle. Needle will collect several eggs from inside their follicles. During the second part of in vitro fertilization, called fertilization, the collected eggs will be taken immediately to a laboratory where they will be fertilized. So the way that we did it was we would aspirate them and actually the embryologist would be in the operating room with us and they would have their microscope and they would put the oocytes into the dish there and then they would look at them and they would grade them on a scale, I think it was like ABC, I can't remember. And that's a grading system of you know, how healthy they look um, on the little, you know, petri dish thing. Fertilization may be performed by insemination, where several sperm are mixed with the healthiest eggs. Or the eggs may be fertilized with sperm injected directly into them during a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. You would use that if you have somebody with a really low sperm count or for some reason the fertilization isn't happening. So most of the time you can just mix them and the sperm will fertilize the egg itself. But ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection increases the chances of having a successful fertilization. So if you have, you know, not very many oocytes or not very many sperm or something else going on, for some reason they are not uh, individually successfully becoming fertilized, then you can use ICSI to increase those chances. The fertilized eggs, also called embryos, will be monitored for three to five days as they begin to grow. At this time, the lab may create a hole in the zona pellucida surrounding some of the embryos. This process, called assisted hatching, will help these embryos implant in the uterus. Some During that time frame, you can also do what we talked about yesterday with the pre-implantation genetic testing where you go in and remove one of the cells to send off for genetic testing and then freeze all of the embryos and only transfer the ones that come back with normal genetics. Of the embryos will be used right away for embryo transfer and the rest will be frozen and stored for future use if necessary. The third part of in vitro fertilization is called embryo transfer which is done three to five days after fertilization. During yeah, some infertility doctors do prefer to do it um, because it's more effective. It's also more expensive. Um, so yeah, I think there's, it's always a bit, you know, the incentive there is, I don't know. During embryo uh, For the record, I'm oh, sorry. I don't think we do that regularly in New Zealand because it costs more and it's time intensive manually and a lot of times you don't necessarily need it. A tool called a speculum will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that the doctor can see her cervix. Now they're talking about transferring the embryo back into the uterus. So this is usually uh, five or so days after you have had the uh, fertilization occur. A syringe will be loaded with fluid containing one or more of the hatched embryos. Then the syringe will be attached to a long, thin tube called a catheter. The doctor will insert the catheter into the vagina, through the cervix, and into the uterus. Once inside the uterus, the doctor will inject the embryos. Then the catheter and speculum will be removed. The woman may continue to lie on her back for about 15 minutes. Super cool, right? Okay, 